What's red, shiny, reflective, and has light qualities? A Mardi Gras bead curtain, of course. Hi, I'm Diane Sheline. Welcome to Strategy to See, where I share tips, tricks, modifications, and strategies to use with students with cortical visual impairment. Today, I'm gonna to share one of my um, other favorite visual targets to use. It's called, I call it a Mardi Gras bead curtain. And um, I want to first state that it's really important that all of our kids have a thorough assessment ahead of time. The assessment helps us to determine preferred color, whether light and backlighting benefits the student, um, where to present the materials in their best field of view, and a variety of other um, things, such as distance we present the materials um, from the student, etc. So it's always important to do a very thorough assessment. But what I have found is that this tool is very helpful to use in the very beginning when kids are first starting to use vision. It really attracts their visual attention and, um, and I found it very, very useful. It's important to remember that um, we don't have a lot of testing on these materials yet. They're promising practices. They're not best practices. Best practices, we would have done some testing with them and we know that they are absolutely what works. What I'm sharing with you today are techniques and strategies that I've found to be helpful with the students that I work with. So let's take a look at what this Mardi Gras bead curtain is. I use it um, with a variety of backlight devices. You can use it with a light box app on your iPad. This is just a small, very portable light box that I suppose was used for um, sorting um, uh, different film strips and, and slides at one time, but um, I've converted it and it is now a, a light box that I use with students. Uh, the most common one that most uh, teachers of the visually impaired have are is the um, APH light box. And this is the mini light box. And this is the one that I actually use most often. It has a stand that you can bring the uh, Mardi Gras bead curtain up into the best field of view. And I've modified it slightly by putting Velcro along the top of it and then Velcro on the back of the stick so that uh, you can place the Mardi Gras bead curtain right on top and in front of that light source so that it is backlit. Remember, an understanding of what your student's preferred color is would be very beneficial before you make this. For example, if your student's preferred color is the Kelly green color, make it with the Kelly green beads. Um, don't make it with the red beads. Uh, and I would recommend that you use all one color of bead. Do not use multiple colors of beads. Usually in phase one, kids like one solid color. Uh, and, and it's not until late phase one and into phase two when they can tolerate two and maybe three colors. So remember not to use the multicolored beads. Just get one color and get it in the color of your student's preferred color or preferred choice of color. So keep that in mind. So let me tell you exactly how I make my Mardi Gras beads. I always have to get a stick um, for the, to hold the beads. Uh, in place, and one of the best things to use is at the paint stores such as Lowe's or at Home Depot, there are free paint stirring sticks. And I just spray paint that paint stirring stick with a Krylon flat black spray paint. And it turns out that it's the perfect length for along the APH mini light box. Now I know APH is coming out with a new light box soon and it's gonna be black and it will still work with that one as well. So and that, that one's gonna be really terrific when it comes out. Um, but for now, the, the blue mini light box, the paint stirring stick works perfectly with it. Then it takes to have a nice bead curtain with a lot of beads. 
It takes about 24 party bead necklaces. And I buy them in bulk quantities and they come in 12 bead necklaces to a pack. So it takes about 22 to 24 necklaces if they're squeezed close together and hot glued onto the, to the black spray painted stick. Then you take each one of those necklaces and you cut it in half at the top and at the bottom so that you've got two strands. And you go through all of the strands and do that cutting until you get a big pile of them here. And then you take your hot glue gun and I only do about an inch at a time. So I'm going to just put about an inch of hot glue in the very center of this stick. And I've got my beads all pre-cut and ready. And we stick them on. Very tight, one next to another. And when you're only doing about an inch at a time, you have enough time to kind of reposition them in there. Be real careful, don't get the hot glue gun on your glue on your fingers, it really burns. You don't. See how close we put them together? And again, there's a little bit of maneuvering around you can do for about a minute with the hot glue and then it's pretty, pretty stiff. That's about how close you want them. Once you've got your entire stick filled with beads, there's, uh, uh, you know, about um, a total of 48 strands going across the stick. Um, then I put an extra bead of hot glue along the top row of beads to make sure that they're extra secure. Oftentimes my students will reach out and start to grab the beads as they're looking with them and playing with them. And you don't want those beads to pull off. This is not a child safe toy. So you want to make sure that they're on there very well. Uh, regardless, whenever you do make um, targets like this to use with our students with cortical visual impairment. You want to make sure that you're watching at all times because these are not child safe toys. Once the glue is hard and dry on the top of the um, entire stick and they're very secure, the beads are very secure on there, then I take three strips of black Velcro and I put it on the back of the stick. And then the opposite side of the Velcro, I put on my light box, whichever light box I am using. And that completes the Mardi Gras bead curtain. If you've liked this video, feel free to go to my website and sign up on my email list to hear more about videos that are coming out similar to this and or resources. Remember to take a look below to find links for the materials used in this project and in this video, as well as a link to my website and to my book. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.